Oh, I'm going to hit that button. And um, you can say whatever you want, Carl. You can swear. You can... I mean, don't do what someone apparently but apparently at New York Comic Con, which is happening right now as we record. Apparently, yesterday, someone just openly took a shit on the con floor. Oh no! That, I mean, that was it. That, that, yeah, there's no. I don't Ooh. know what happened afterwards, but that's the headline, and there's nothing more to say. Ooh. Someone literally took a shit on the floor. I mean, you do realise right. you're opening this podcast with that story, don't you? Well, it might not be on. It won't, won't be on the ah. audio version. Uh, but it will be on the YouTube version. <laughs> I, hope that, I, hope, I hope that's not going to be me because I'm sat on my couch here and I've got food poisoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to well, be me. That's what you're getting at, isn't it? Jake is going to. So I like how you just put it to me straight away. As long as Jake, we don't. Uh, today's, today's podcast will be sponsored by Tenor Men, adult nappies <laughs> for middle-aged builders from Wigan. Um, <laughs> that's a very specific demographic. I like yeah, that. that would be me. Um, yeah. um, right, <clears throat> I'm going to kick us in. I need to take a run up for this. You'll hear why in a minute. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. My name is Ian Taylor, and you are listening to the Marvel Card Collectors Podcast, your weekly digest of hobby goodness. This royal throne of kings, this sceptered isle, this earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden paradise this fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the hand of war this happy breed of men this little world this precious stone set in the silver sea which serves it in the office of a wall or as a moat defensive to a house against the envy of less happier lands this blessed plot this earth this realm this england also, welcome to Carl Varney and Jake McManus. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I can't believe oh. I took a stab at some Shakespeare for the opening of a podcast. I can't. That's the best opening you've ever done so far, I reckon. <laughs> I had actually said that for four years. Humbly blessed to, to be graced <laughs> with such a, an introduction. I, I had a moment of the Brian Blesseds. You did, you can then, imagine yeah. him doing that, can't you? Um, that was for 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 those that are not privy to the inner workings of Shakespeare's um, speeches. That was from Richard the Second, and it goes on. There's another verse which you never know. I might do later on, but it gets a bit gets a bit bonkers. Anyway, how are you, chaps? I'm good. You're good. Yeah. You're good. Yeah, well, excellent. You're not that good, are you, Jake? Because uh, you've you've got food no. poisoning, haven't you? No, I'm really ill. I've been up. Holding my stomach till six this morning. I dropped off and woke up at eight. And I'm, this is why I'm not in my office stroke card room. So I've set up on the couch. I thought, I'm not missing this podcast. No. I am not missing the Brit invasion. No I, way. I, I, I'm, I'm at, in admiration at your um, your robustness of spirit, shall we say. Um, so uh, we, British invasion, that's exactly what this episode is called. Uh, because, uh, Carl, where are you in the UK? You in the Midlands? Yeah, so I'm just outside of Worcester, but I'm uh, Birmingham born and bred, and slowly moved further west as I've got uh, got uh, got older to somewhat avoid people. <laughs> <laughs> do you and live the like general a, traffic? Do you live like in a really rural area? Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I I overlook the Malvern Hills one way and the fields of um, sort of Alberley the other way. Right. Um, nice. Okay. So yeah, no, it's lovely. Uh, COVID was a blessing for you, I have to say. Oh, because you were already self-isolating by virtue of yeah, where you live. It yeah, was, it, yeah. Well, I just had sheep in the field next door, and that was about it, really. Fair so enough. it was fair enough. Um, I enjoy. I enjoyed. I enjoyed COVID. I've got to say, every really? time I take so my son works in an office, so it's his last year as an accountant. I've told her the story before. He was a professional gamer, wasn't he? And then COVID. Obviously, he couldn't travel to the US, so somehow he's ended up being an accountant of sort. You've never told me this story. Uh, which one? You've never told me this story. You've probably told it on content that's out there somewhere, but I don't remember you telling oh, me probably. he was a professional gamer. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, what happened was... Uh, I'll try and keep it short, but basically, it was a professional gamer and working. That's what I say to the world. But every, every, I know, yeah, we could do that too. And every three months he'd go to the US or Europe playing Gears of War. And eventually 
because you've got to play against the US, the Americans, mm -hmm. it's hard to keep up training and practicing and screaming and that. And uh, so when COVID came, anyway, HS to do gaming full time. And then he did it all right. They were European champion a couple of times. They did it all right in America. They were earning a decent wage. And then, uh, yeah, I just went a bit tipped. Yeah. And that's how we got into cards. We got into cards because GA didn't have a second income then. And he said, I need a second income. And somehow we got into Pokemon cards, probably because it, it was a hype and he loved them anyway. And from there, me, Marvel cards. Okay, hang on. So you got only got into Pokemon like twenty twenty. Two thousand nineteen, maybe twenty. Oh wow! Okay. Whenever, so it first, whenever it first started. Hang on, no, no. Uh, po uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. COVID was twenty twenty. Pokemon was obviously decades earlier. Uh, but for some reason, yeah, I had yeah. it in my head you were into Pokemon for like like ages. No, no, no. What what we did is Spoon just said he wanted to get into it. Uh, built a website and registered with the wholesalers and had an online shop and just kept buying and selling all over the place. Wow. Okay. So, so you went balls deep straight away, pretty much. Yeah, huge. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I say huge, but big enough. Yeah. yeah well, that's the, yeah, but it's like, oh yeah, we just needed to do this, so we built a website and started selling it. <laughs> it's like you went from there to there in one go. It's like, oh, I might buy a few packs just to see what it's like. No, we'll build a website and sell it. Yeah, yeah we'll get straight yeah, stuck but... into the wholesalers, and away we go. I mean, yeah, yeah. Bloody hell. That wasn't easy. We were quite lucky, but I just I hounded them and I hounded them and hound hounded them. It helps if you're already a limited company with VAT registered and blah, 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 anyway. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, yeah, I just didn't leave them alone until they gave me the accounts. But soon after we had ours, they stopped giving people accounts and they just said, oh, you can't have them because the demand was so big. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, well, you got in just before the cutoff then. So yes, do you still have your website and do you still trade with the Pokemon stuff? We still uh, built a new website. So what happened? I was so busy with work, uh, I let I let it go. So if you don't use them all the time, they like kick you out, and okay. I didn't, so they kicked me out. So I've just started again. So on there at the minute, it's mostly graded cards, but we still have Pokemon cards that we grade and we sell and blah blah blah. But yeah. we still got a big stock of stuff. Well, most of it's gone now. But we did have a big stock of stuff that, you know, we've still been selling. But, but we, we have still got, yeah, a lot, yeah. Wow. Wow. So you two, you're, uh, it just occurred to me, because the first time, the reason I ask if you were in a rural area, Carl, is we had a video call oh, maybe a couple of years back now, because you, you wanted some kind of advice as to how to strategically attack, is it Spidey Metal? But yeah, Spider-Man Metal. That's right. Your, your advice saved me a small fortune, so I thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, checks in the mail. Um, so, uh, and when I spoke to you, you were outside. I think you'd just been chopping logs. So I kind of had this image of you as some like, rugged, like, lumberjack, you know, with uh, uh, bulging biceps and, and all this sort of stuff. Um, but it, it makes sense if you're in the middle of nowhere. But you two are both in a similar game, aren't you? Because, Jake, you build houses. Carl, what do you do? Build houses. <laughs> there we go. I mean, can, you nah. can't make this shit up. If you... <laughs> I was going to say, well, I was going to say, Jake, you must know Carly builds houses as well. It's like one of those things. It's like, oh, well, yeah, I'm from Malta. Always, oh, you must know my brother. People. He's from Malta. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've had I've, I've had someone say that to me before. Was it? Was it? Yeah. Oh, I'm from Devon. Oh, yeah. My my um my cousin's from Devon. You must know him. And they proceeded to tell me his name. Of course, I don't fucking know. You know like Devon. But Jake, <laughs> when, when somebody asks you, what do you do? How do you describe yourself? Because I, I have, like, I, I never, I always just say I'm a builder, generally. Because if you go down the road of saying you're a property developer, everybody just assumes you're like Sarah Beanie and you go and buy a house in an auction and you do it up. And obviously, I don't know what you do, but I'll buy a field if I can get one and put anything from two to 14 houses on it. Wow. I just, I just don't tell people what I do generally. Uh, which, which is fair enough. It's easier. <laughs> Saves all the questions. Worst thing is I'm electrician by trade, and the the minute you say you're electrician, 
oh yeah, I've got a laptop that doesn't work. And uh, I wonder if you look at my granddad Alfred's Ferrari because it's all coming up on the computer. And I'm like, no, I'm an electrician. Yeah, I'm an electrician. I don't do all that. But yeah, I don't I don't really like. Yeah. That's funny. Don't say. Is that is that because you just genuinely don't speak to people? There's part of that, yeah. That's a big part. Yeah. Another Fair part enough. is somebody might somebody might ask me to do some work. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, I need. I've got this. I've got this. I've got this. Uh, I've got this fuse box. I need to. <laughs> That's what, happens, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happens, yeah. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. Well, so I feel bad now because I collared you the other night to show you some some uh, uh, ventilation oh, that was uh, all related right. issues. Um, as long as I don't have to turn up, that's all right. Oh, bugger! Oh, that's going to be my next question. Oh, well, never mind. Um, so, Carl, how how did you? Because we first met is 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 a dramatic way of saying it. I was selling off about three years ago all of my parallels. From all the sets I had. So that was my Gold Sig set from 94 Masterpieces, same from 95 Masterpieces, my uh, same from Masterpie- uh, Masterpieces 2016, 2018, 2020. In fact, Jake, I think you bought my 2018 What If set. Yeah, yeah. yeah one to three, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, one of the last things I put up for sale, or it might have been one of the first things I put up for sale, was my Gold and Bronze Hollow foils from masterpieces 94 that's right yeah i think i bought two or three of the two or three of them but I, I remember you i remember you were you messaged me you were very um condition specific you wanted to you wanted to see the pictures and that and i was like all oh, right there's a guy who knows what he's looking for um, well i don't think i did actually i think that was the irony all um, oh, right you, you say how did i get into it and it's very it's not dissimilar to, to jake from a time scale point of view um a really good friend of mine who I, I, I've known for a long time, um, who ironically sold some houses for me. Um, and for years, I didn't even know that this existed in his house. I mean, I must have known him now for probably a dozen years. And for eight or nine years, I didn't even know he had a trading card. And when COVID kicked off, he bought a case of 2016 Marvel Masterpieces. Oh, wow. um, And this was... Probably at the end of 2019, he bought this mm-hmm. um, and got it through either at the end of 2019 or the beginning of 2020 when COVID was kicking off. Um, and I happened to be around his house at the time when, when he was deciding to rip into it. Um, and he just kind of said, oh, I've got this case of trading cards. Do you want, do you want to rip into it with me? And um, I mean, he hit some fire out of this uh, this case. Wow. Just and the guy that sold it to him actually, ironically, said to him, "I think that the prices of the case almost doubled within 24, 48 hours." Um, and he said, "It's the worst commercial decision he's ever made in his life." Well, and selling the case to your mate. That, selling selling the case, and it was a US guy um, who sold it, obviously, to, to to this guy in the UK. And it was my first introduction to trading cards. I think, you know, unless you catch it when you're a kid, you don't really know it exists. And I've obviously Mm. loved all Marvel comics and and, and the art specifically. I've always thought the art's just just amazing. Mm. Um, And, yeah, I I was blown away. It, it It was just an hour and a half of this, but with a case. Um, wow. And yeah, he pulled some fire out of this case. I think he got a tier four Wolverine, a tier four Wolverine, what if auto? I mean, wow. it was just, well, no. it just kept coming. And um, and that was my very first introduction. Um, and then over the next few months, etc., it was a case of I, I've got this folder, and he just pulls out folders and folders and folders of just, uh, just everything. Um, and he's not in the groups. He's not on Facebook, and 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 he just keeps himself to himself. And it's just like wow. And then wow. COVID hit, and I thought, you know, I'm going to get stuck into this. Um, and you end up not, you know, COVID. You end up not doing a lot. And and, and so I bought a case of 2020. Um, oh, yes. Nice. Directly through Dave and Adams, actually. So I didn't pay the the cheapest. Um, 
And I was a bit surprised that they shipped it to the UK, actually, because I, I wasn't quite sure that they could or should, but they did. Um, not supposed to, are they? Legally, they're not supposed to, are they? Oh, yeah. Sorry, David Adams, if I've just dropped you in it. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. No, <laughs> and, um, and, and, yeah, and so you then get your kind of, you know, your, your parcel anxiety as it's being handled via UPS. Oh. And, you you know, you give them a very specific <laughs> place where to leave it in the house and, and you get back home and, and they say, we've left it there and it's not there. And you're like, right, well, brilliant. Where's that then? Um, and I found it, ironically, in a shed down the garden. I mean, uh, it's as far away from where I asked them to leave it. But anyway, uh, and so that was it. So, yeah, he had a case and we had a case and we tore into that and, the rest, as they say, is history. Wow. Um, and, and, and I was exceptionally fortunate because I think my very first box, um, and I didn't understand it at the time, I pulled that. Oh, nice. Tier four, I what tier four, my, Yeah, my first or second box. And, um, and I didn't realise how good a card it was. And he was losing his shit over it. You know, he was like, oh, you can't do it. And obviously, you know, he's like, oh, we must be like the, the what if Wolverine crowd, you know, because he had yeah. his, his, he had his. case. I, I, and I'm it sort of went from there, really. I'm going to say um, now, I put money on the fact that someone will listen to this episode and hit you up via DM to want to get in touch with your mate. Just putting it out yeah, there. Yeah, me. I'm going to put me. <laughs> someone other than us three here. I'm going to say, I'm going to bet you 20 quid that someone does that within the <laughs> anyway, yeah. first week. Yeah, guaranteed, I've, guaranteed. I've got to say there, though, I mean, what an introduction to Marvel cards. Yeah. You mate just getting a case of MM16. That's like your first girlfriend being Salma Hayek, which she pulled up in a Ferrari. <laughs> so there you go, this is life from now on, and you're like, hey, what? Look, is this uh, how it is? And you can probably see from that why if you... You know, you like the artwork and you like the you know the Marvel world, you're just going to be instantly hooked. Yeah. Um yeah. and then he's pulling out, you know, 92 and and etc. Mm. And um and yeah, it's been a journey ever since. And 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 every time I come into the office that's over my garage, I make a point of just randomly going to a folder and flicking through some pages. Um Everything's in folders. There's very little on display, um, and, I, and and yeah, I just I, I always try to do that just so that they're not just in a folder mm. on a shelf that you never look at. Yeah, yeah, no, that's smart. That's smart. So you must have. Um, what, what's your? How big is your collection now? I mean, we're what three and a bit years past that point now, but I think you've, yes. you've got a so pretty I'll... decent setup, haven't you? Yeah, so I went mad, really, and probably caught it just right to be able to go right. mad uh, and ended up with pretty much every set from 90 onwards, including all of the parallels, up to a point. Um, I, I didn't get involved in promos or anything like that or any of the kind of oversized stuff or the, the you know, the, the things that you can really flesh your collections out with. So it just went... In a Marvel universe, Marvel masterpieces, um, uh, the X Men stuff, the Written House stuff. Um, I kind of miss the 2013 15 retro stuff mm. and then picked it back up with masterpieces from 2016. I didn't hit anything from 2018. Um, I, I, I just skipped that set really. And then obviously Spider Man Metal and and yeah like other stuff I'm sure somewhere wow. <laughs> random tins of, of stuff but that, yeah that must be quite a sizable collection I mean that's a lot of sets there I mean did you get did you get Masterpiece ninety six for example you've done that yeah my ninety six was wow. done ninety five emotions yeah uh, uh, yeah the, the, the ninety four I, I I mean bizarrely I've ended up with two sets of 94 complete and two sets of 95 complete, apart from the Mirage cards. Wow. Just because I was buying vids on eBay that you were winning for nothing uh, at the time. And uh, I just ended up with so much stuff. that, wow. And I thought, I've got to stop that now and just be much more targeted. <clears throat> um, 
and 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 obviously there's a there's a, a British guy in the Romy who's not with us anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, who I bought some sets off, and he probably gave me the best bit of advice. I think, um, and I'm sure we'll come on to it. And he basically said, "Look, if you're going to buy sets in the UK, you're probably better off buying complete sets, yeah, rather than trying to chase." singles to complete sets here and here there and everywhere Mm -hmm. because with postage global shipping some of the headwinds that we have and and that was genius i think um for, for for me to be able to get from where i was which was nothing to just a collection i'm really proud of wow yeah now that's interesting that so there's a couple of things so i want to um I kind of wanted to get into some of the challenges we have in the UK when we're collecting effectively American trading cards. No, I mean, that's what it is. Um, Cause there are cards that are made for the European market by Panini. Um, and funny enough, we, 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 we met, what was it about six months ago, Carl, you came down this way. Yeah. Oh, I, was over, I was over going to do the factory tour at Lotus for the Amira. And that must've been February it was, time. It was, yeah. I remember it was. Yeah. It was still like grim and dark in the evenings. There wasn't. A, there wasn't a ray of sunshine to be seen. Um, and we could have, been Ju- could have been July then, Ian. Could have been July. Oh, flipping out, yeah. Uh, well, out of July was, was a shocker. Um, so we, um, I was about to say, we don't get much over here, but we do have the Panini sets, which are okay to a point. Um, but I think what frustrates me about the Panini sets is because we know from what we get from Upper Deck and for all its faults, they still do knock out some pretty bonkers stuff. Um, we know how good it could be. you know. And then when you get a Panini set, it's kind of like, it's, it's okay, but you remember that TV advert from a few years ago where someone was like saying, oh, it's like a golf. Yeah, it's like a golf, yeah. you know, it's like this. It's like we might as well just buy golf, <laughs> you know, a, a Volkswagen golf. Um, so that's kind of how I feel about the Panini sets. I do them to scratch an itch, uh, but with very few exceptions, are they anything that kind of sings to me or I want to keep? Um, the thing yeah. was good, wasn't it? The uh, the one with all the Delato and Alex Ross covers and that, the 50 card set, yeah, the uh, and that's the just yeah, that was amazing. You got the Bill Sinkovich lecture there. And yeah. they're all comic covers, aren't they? A lot of them from they Marvel are. 1000, I believe. Spider-Man 60. Uh, no, the one before that, Marvel 80th Anniversary. Marvel so, 80th so Anniversary. What, so so for, our, for our listeners who don't know, very rarely do Panini release a card set, just a card mm. set. I think the only one, the Marvel Versus uh, 2022 yeah, is probably yeah. the only one, because Marvel Versus the previous year, I think, was stickers and cards. It was, um, yeah. So... Uh, most of the time when these Panini sets reach America, they're just the stickers because Upper Deck have the license for for the US, Canada, North American market. Um, but in the in Europe, you get, uh, what is it, four or five stickers and you get one card in each pack. Mm. Um, yeah. And the collations are bastard. I remember it took me, it took me <laughs> a long time to finish the 60 cards in the Spider-Man 60th set. I mean, yeah. an awfully long time. In the end, I had to buy the last ones off Panini's own website from their kind of spares service, um, and that kind of finished me off. But I'm, I'm buying a box of those, and the collation was terrible on the cards. I'd get like three or four of a certain card, and there were some that you saw. There was a group on on Facebook. I mean, it's still there. I think I've left it, where people were like doing swaps of that Panini 60th anniversary Spider-Man set. And they were all asking whatever country you're in for the same card numbers because they were clearly oh, really? seeded at That's a lower a... ratio, um, which I thought, you know, and it was the most popular covers. You know, it was amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. To, um... I mean, that is that is a top tip for anybody who collects Panini. I did it for Valor Comics. Uh, shout out to Daniel. And uh, I already had a set. I had a load of cards. And uh, I said, I've nearly got a full set here. I'll send it over to you, like, just because he wanted to collect it. Mm. And I went on the Panini website. I think I was 10 short, and I just got the 10 off the Panini website. I yeah. think 10 was the limit. No, then you've five. got to use a different address. Five. And then, was it five? You can do up to, you can do up to, 
I think you can do up to four or five orders of five cards a time to any one address when I went on. Oh, that, that and must I needed, have been what it was. Uh, yeah. Two fives. But... I needed, I think I needed 13 to finish, but mind you, I was building three complete sets of it because I was building yes. uh, a, a Spidey set for, for my Spidey collection. And then I've also got a side PC of like comic covers because these were Spidey comic covers from over the years. So I wanted mm. a set for that. And then I was building a set for Eugene. Um, mm. So I ended up having to make three, three sets. And it was, just, I mean, building one would have been painful, but building three was just like psychotic. Gotcha, yeah. mm. um, and it was, it was a chore. But outside of, of those sticker sets that have cards, we, you know, you can't buy a product over here. You know, no. it's, it's pretty limited. So when you first kind of got into the game, how did you, what what was your kind of journey of discovery uh, from the brutal reality of, of being able to obtain like the modern upper deck products in the UK? Um, Jake, how did you find it when you got into it? Uh, went straight into Commonsea. Firstly, I ordered a load of sets from America. Made sure that the people that I ordered off had multiple sets or multiple cards that I wanted. Sent them over, paid the 20% taxes, you know. No issues, to be honest with you, really. It was, you just have to be aware that we pay 20% on top of everything. So if most you, people... If it gets caught in customs? Well, because it's through eBay, they won't be willing to change the price. Now, eBay used to do a bit of a fickle thing. So what they used to do, if it was $100 for argument's sake, they, w they wouldn't tell you the exact shipping charges. You had to kind of guess and then you get it to yeah. the UK and it could end up anything. Now, eBay covers that globally. So oh, you mean the import you the, fees? The figure, yeah, yeah. the import fees that you're paying. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, that was the first thing I did. But I was at uh, quite a bit of experience of getting stuff sent over from Japan for the Pokemon. Mm. So what happened basically is our government with the Brexit and that, if they'd just left it all hanging in the air, it would have been fine. But they didn't, and they had to sort Brexit out, which basically any listeners, we left the European Union as such in a legislative kind of way, but we'll not get into that. So at the time then, even Japan, you could get stuff shipped over, and it was kind of, you might get an import charge, maybe one out of ten. You know, I, I, I've sent stuff over that was thousands of pounds, dollars, whichever, and I had no issues. And it was the same at the first with the Marvel cards. If I kept it under, like, $500, I had no issues. And then all of a sudden, with the Brexit, and we're going to do blah, 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 then, because the Japanese, they post mainly, they do it by FedEx, come to their house generally, and they pick it yeah. up and they put it in and they send it. And all the Japanese people, and, and Japanese people have Marvel cards as well, by the way, not just Pokemon. They'll always send you, like, a nice little letter and saying, you know, an email address if you want to buy from, you know, you could do that. Uh, but getting back to the part with the taxes, so I was tired of paying taxes. So the first foray was Compensy. I went straight into Compensy. Uh, can't remember. Probably our podcast that I learned about come see. I'm guessing, and I went straight in there, put some money in it. It took ten percent straight away. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. I'm putting like a thousand dollars in here, and they want or whatever the fee was. I don't know if anyone can remember, but it's quite high, isn't it? To put a thousand dollars in, what to buy 5%? the credit? Yeah. It's not ten percent. It's ten percent if you sell, isn't it? Actually? Yeah. No, I don't get charged a fee. When no, I we don't get charged. Credit. We have a little bit of a. We have a little bit of a. Uh, oh, maybe, a maybe when I, maybe that is when I, come. maybe that is when I was selling and wanted to take my money out. I think that's yeah, that's, right. yeah, that's right. That's that's ten percent, isn't it? Uh, it's it's a percentage. Bear I don't. Bear yeah, I just leave my money in there as credit because I'm refused to give them that <laughs> that money. Yeah, yeah I, 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 sell I do money. a lot in it though. But all I did is I bought tons and tons on Comsey, lots and lots, lots of Britannel stuff. Not too many PMGs, but I did buy some, uh, some Flea Retro stuff, uh, Masterpieces stuff, lots of autos, lots of autos. I love on-card autos, mm. Black Diamond, the usual stuff, you know. 
And uh, I, d- I just thought, well, I don't need to send it home. I've got it there. And I always had an eye to sell it. So I was quite happy with that. Then I jumped onto EPAC. And then I didn't realise you couldn't have an EPAC account without an American address, which you told me, because I was trying to buy something and I couldn't. And so I did the EPAC, and my, my address is still the, the pizza shop in Florida somewhere. Because we always joke without about tax. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. And so I went nuts with the EPAC stuff and blah, 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 blah. And then I sent a lot of that to uh, Com C, which then sold as well. And then to cut a long story short, I've got a huge pile of cash in Com C, like thousands and thousands and thousands. And I've got thousands and thousands. And this, I'm not trying to be clever. You know what I'm like. You know, I, I just mm. say things as they are. I'm not mm. a, like, a big ball or a high roller or nothing. Mm. Just, you know. And then it came to sending them over from Comsey. And you're doing the sleeves and the blah, blah, blah. And I didn't have any American friends at the time. So I sent an order over, which was, I, I think the value was five grand, basically. So the order came over. Took months and months and months because I wasn't going to pay the most expensive shipping. Mm. Got into British customs, ends up in London, goes to Coventry, they always end up. Mm. It was there for, oh, I bet a month. And I'm constantly ringing and they're saying, oh, we don't know. And things, it's $5,000 or pounds, you know, it's not that much dissimilar. And eventually it did come. And it opened there. I thought, oh, thank the Lord. Everything's come, everything's all right. And then the second time I did a Com C hit, it was another five grand hit. Sent that home, and this is where I fucked up. So I sent that home, and I sent the values. So the tax on the first five grand was 500 quid. That was everything done. The second five grand, they charged me 900 quid. The British government have now decided that the tax levies are much, much higher than what they used to be. So what I should have done and what I'll always do in the future. So my advice is get some cards off EPAC if you can trade with friends off EPAC. Send it to Com C and then when you're sending them home, put your own value in. Put your value of one cent. And that's what I should have done to save a lot in fees. Mm. And I've thought about the, the legality of this as well, even if they stop you. Even if they stop you, it's like... Yeah, well, it's a piece of art. It's not gold, pal. I'm not mm. weighing. I'm not weighing three ounces of gold here. It's a trading card, and that could be worth a hundred dollars or one dollar, depending on whatever climate that was changed from week to week. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. But yeah, that, so that cost me a fortune. And what I should have done, which you know now, I use Nathan True Blue Collectibles as my uh, mule. So basically, I just get everything sent to Nathan, so yeah. it helps to have an American friend. Absolutely. Sorry, that was a long-winded. Uh... No, no, no. It absolutely does help to have an American friend. I mean, I'm blessed. Uh, Donny um, has helped me out the past couple of years. Uh, previously, it was um, Norin, but um, but Don Donny's great, and he always ships it um, UPS, so um, yeah. it gets here in. Last last package he sent me arrived about three weeks ago, and it's he sent it on the Monday. I had it on the Thursday. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Good as gold. And you know, I'm fully aware of the fact that this is probably illegal and definitely a risk. But I always have in market as like fifteen dollars. So yeah. is it is it is it illegal because the price is subjective? Well, that's the thing. I mean, is obviously, it, that's what I, what I was talking well, about. Yeah, but the thing is, what I paid for it. Isn't, no, that's isn't anywhere, yeah. What I paid for it, A, isn't anywhere near the package because you know it's all been unpacked and oh, repacked. Sure. Um, and B, prove it, prove it's worth that just because I chose to exactly pay that, much, yeah. you know. <laughs> so, exactly that, yeah. Um, I, so, think, yeah. I think going back back to my original journey, the, the, the guy who got the case of 2016, that's what he's his advice to me was you need a decent contact in the states if you're mm. going to go heavy into it. Um, and he introduced me to someone who um, he's always taken my stuff uh, either direct. And, and you know, my plan is to get over to the States, and I've got a load of stuff sitting on Com C, and one of the days I'll ship it all to him. Um, uh, and then when I go over to the States, I, I'll just pick it all up, you know, uh, and, and 
I'll, I'll have it that way. Um, mm. But yeah, every every six months or so, he'll collate everything I've had chipped away and sent to him. Because yeah. um, sending stuff via the US to here with the global shipping program, you just get beaten up mm. um, left, right and centre. So, um, yeah, I find it bizarre that you can buy like a, a you know, a $50 item on Amazon that comes from China and you don't get tax on it. Yet you can yep. buy now a fifty dollar card on eBay from China yep. and you just get raped and pillaged with it. Yep. So I, I just yeah, you just gotta be smart and um and I think actually that's how Jake and I first communicated is um Alistair put um uh, a post on for Flare Ultra Avengers. Yeah. Um and uh, PJ Picked up the mantle right. and shout out to PJ and shout said, "Yeah, PJ. PJ's a get dude. Some, yeah, amazing, super top chap." And um, and said, "Yeah, send send the, the blasters to my house. I'll forward them on." They came to me. I shipped them out to um, out to Jake and and, and up to uh, Alistair. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll come on to that. But Alistair and I then had a one of these, you know, ripping the cards, and then it was ace. You know, you get into rip product with someone mm -hmm. uh, and it just it just elevates it it's kind of what it's about and um and that's the fun isn't it i think that's one of the biggest things that this hobby and i imagine any collectible hobby when it comes to trading cards is part of it is is that rip mm. um i think it's 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 it, it's just the unknown of what's in your in your case in your box in your in your packs yeah yeah, which is why I think people will still quite happily drop. Was it? I was talking to someone the other day, and they were saying, you know, there's they're having trouble selling stuff, perfectly decent sketches, you know, on on eBay, priced fairly, um, and people would rather buy and take the risk and buy some new product that they may or may not be into just <laughs> just to get the experience of the uh, the gamble. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's another problem, isn't it? I was looking the other day at what I thought. I'd like to open something. I looked and there's a beginnings box on eBay. I think it's hundred and fifty pounds. And it's like it's too much. Mm. You know, I understand they brought it in and they need to make money on it. I, I get that. And I'm not saying it's a bad price that they're selling it for. But we just don't really have the choice, do we? You know, it's really, really hard. Yeah. I think we, this year we can't sorry, Karen Jack. Go on, Carl. No, yeah, I, like I was just going to say, I think this year has actually been really good for me um, in terms of how I'm now going to collect going forwards. Because when I started with not a single trading card and you could buy, you know, uh, chase sets, base sets, etc. Um, and Masterpieces was a fantastic rip. And, uh, and it really set my how I'm going to collect so for me, and it's kind of gone full circle. So I went down the road of a case and that art and the parallels within that drove my collection. Mm. It showed how I was going to collect that set. And then this year, with the sheer amount of product that we've had, it's been really oh. easy to avoid stuff. Um, I did a box of a lure. Um, with a, a rip via David Adams, an online one. That got shipped over to the UK. It was a $250 box. I got hit with 40 quid's worth of um, uh, taxes and stuff, and I got the cards in hand, and I just thought, meh, I don't like them. I, I don't like the, the, the character, um, actor-led stuff. And it was really – so it was great to do the rip because it just meant that I can just stay away from that. Mm. The original art for me is massive now. Um, Fleer Ultra Avengers, uh, is it a set I, I could, could have taken it or le left it now? Um, I love Spider-Man Metal. I thought it was a great set, probably overpriced, I think, in reality, mm -hmm. but we all know the reasons why it got hyped and no products and yada, yada, yada. And I think the product now is – suffering or well, the values are suffering because of that event yeah. um and so for me now it's really i'm going to choose specifically what i'm looking for with the art that i like 
Um, and I'm only going to buy cases. And so I literally recently had a case of that turn up. Oh, what if? And whether or not I'm going to make my money back, I don't really care. But I've I've spent well, two it's weeks. A point, to, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I've spent two weeks ripping this. Um, I've still got a sealed. A sealed. I still got one sealed box left, which um, nice. I'll, I'll tear into, and the collation's been amazing in this. Um, I have to say, and, and this box, I can almost guarantee, if the collation is spot on, has got a black diamond in it. <laughs> oh, 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 don't tease me! I don't know tease that me because I've got two out of the three black diamonds out of the case that you're supposed to get. Right, um, and so I look forward to ripping that. And um, and that's and, and and what if? So I've tried the you know a couple of blasters here and there for shits and giggles, but then you get cards, and once you've got a friend of mine says it's okay to have one of one thing in your set, like one metallurgy, because you're not going to collect a metallurgy set. I know of one that was sold on eBay in uh, when 2020 started yeah, one there's probably the after one. Yeah. two or three people that have got one you're not going to collect that set you know there's a very select few people that are going to collect greens uh, pmgs and f- amazing it'd be a phenomenal set to have um but for me getting one or two of something like with Fleer ultra avengers was just such a mistake because I've ended up now with bits of a set that I don't really know what to do with. Mm. Whereas Spider-Man Metal, I got the case. Yeah, it was quite expensive, but sell a V. And then you go, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to... And and then you just drop on to Tom C, pick up your singles, pick up your big characters early um, before they all get hoovered up. And then you, you've got a nice set. So yeah. I'm really now this year choosing what to avoid. Yeah. which makes the future a lot easier. <clears throat> Having um, more of a game plan like that is definitely a wise move, especially with the especially extra the herders we've got to go through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I did have a tin of Premier that was supposed to be coming, but I don't think I, I, I got the lottery for one of, for that. So actually that's probably done me a favour. Um, I've got two cases of anime coming. Um oh, nice. One for me and one for a friend, and that'll be another great rip. I love the art in that. I've just picked up the base set just so that I've got the base set so that you can follow it through. Um, and then is there, what's the other set that's coming out? Platinum? Platinum in the new year, I think, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not convinced that's going to be a set for me. I've not jumped onto Beginnings. I've not jumped onto Allegiance. I don't do any of the MCU stuff. So mm. I'm now in a really nice place where I can just – chivy into the sets that i really like oh that's cool that's cool yeah 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 uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wise move i mean platinum the artwork looks amazing on platinum um uh, hats off to grant sangrand for for showing us that the other week but i'm i'm slightly concerned about the finish on it uh, as to what it will do to the art because for me flew ultra avengers had some great art in it but i think I think the 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 design of the base cards and the way they put those stripes on them, those foil stripes, I think it just completely ruined it for for me. Yeah, um, yeah, completely, I think they could have kept the, I think they could have kept the stripe just in the, like the top corner. Well, you know, I mean, masterpieces does it in such a such a subtle way. But mm. if you look at this, we I mean, look at you can't miss that. <laughs> no, it's fucking no. nuts. I mean, look and at I it. It's, it's, it's a good third of the card surface area. Is is yeah. horizontal I mean, diagonal in, stripes? In, in, in fairness, here, me and Nathan did this on the Jerks podcast the other day, and we were talking about this. And I was on about Grant. I can never remember his surname. Sand Grant. Said, when you listen, right listen when you listen, Sand Grant, isn't mm-hmm. it? When you listen to the guy, he's got so much enthusiasm. And this is what we were talking about on the Jerks. Is it's all right saying, "Oh, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that." You've got to try every avenue, haven't you? Mm. You know, and there isn't just Grant involved that, and there'll be some pushes from this way. And, mm. You know, there'll be a group of people, a team, and you—you, you, I'm sure you worked in that. The same as me in a building site, you know. Yeah. And I, I, I think they've been really good. I think the sets have been really good recently. I oh, there's some just been amazing sets. Yeah. Too fat, too fast to jump on up a deck. Yeah, yeah. Well, some of it's been shit. I get that. Mm. Some of it has been shit, but. Look at the autos in the set. You know yeah. the animated autos. Yeah, it was so cool. 
Well, I think Best I think, one you got. I mean, look at. I mean, Carl's probably about to go and talk about this because <laughs> he's been getting into the what if set. But this, these inserts, these acetate episode inserts from What If, are they're they just I, they're beautiful. They're just they're just stunning. I'm trying to find. I mean, the quality. Easy. I mean, you can't knock it at all. It's just a really good design. Um, I think, I think another another consequence of there being no sets out for ages and this that the other and the pumped up prices is that everybody's been overpaying for boxes and then when yeah. they get that if the card is in perfect condition it's like what's this shit it's like yeah. well it's your fault for paying five hundred dollars for two hundred and fifty dollar box you don't <laughs> so need think, to buy think, that box and you I can't think talking complain about, yeah i don't think talking about the Avengers, i think well what where their problem was is that they smashed it out of the park with this Flare Ultra Spider Man was just incredible, yeah. It just Flare amazing. Ultra X Man was amazing. Got, and that's got foiling yeah. on it. And they've mm. just, but they've managed to make the foiling so but it's subtle. subtle. And, and it makes sense what they've done yeah. with the foiling as well. Really um, good. So, I mean, listen, I mean, I, I, it, it, don't get, you know, Flare Ultra Avengers, I think, is a solid set. Um, it's not a set that. I'm, you know, I've chose to go. I, I chose to go into certain elements of it, but I've kind of pulled away on it because I just don't feel it. And at the end of the day, if you're not feeling it with a set, then you know, why, why spend money on it? Why collect it? Why that, have it? That's me. That's me with the latest masterpieces. Take Although it. it's a sublime talent yeah. and fair play to Dan, what he's doing. I said it straight away when there was the Patreon and all that. I don't know, nobody can't afford to do that all the time, but. You could buy it for one month and just mm. delve into all all the info. Get the access to it. And for it, somebody yeah. to to do that to let us access the masterpieces and artists, mm. that that's just hmm, absolutely yeah. mind blowing. Yeah. But again, I I'm not feeling that set. There's some cars that I think are amazing, like the Domino is the best Domino I've ever seen, ever. And there, there are quite a few other cars that are just amazing. Yeah. But personally, I'm just not feeling the set. It's not my style of art. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it's shit. Yeah, yeah, just not your cup of tea. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail nail on the head with what you said just a minute ago, Jake. You know, upper decker damned if they do and damned if they don't. You know, yes. I think they do <laughs> such a good job. And actually, I, yeah. I, you, I think you read out in a question that uh, that I asked for your kind of, I think it was your yearly review. You had a few people on, oh, and I remember you read the question out, and somebody kind of jumped oh, yeah. onto the answer. And, and when you read it out, it wasn't how I meant the question to come across. Yeah, I think I said, "Do we have a right?" Oh, it's Keith. That's right, it's Keith. Yeah, mm. to engage with us, and mm. I didn't mean it the way I wrote it. I'm not mm. the most eloquent with the English language at the best of times, being a brummie. And what I meant was because we're such a niche part of the collecting world, do we that? Do we? Would we get more out of Upper Deck if they engaged with us? Is kind of where I was coming from because yeah. when we listen to Grant and we listen to how enthusiastic he is about the product and and all of that kind of stuff, you can only get wrapped up in that kind of positive emotional energy, and that's what I kind of meant. That's what I wanted mm. to. That's how I wanted the question to come across. And mm. when you presented it, it came across as really cold, really harsh because that's how I wrote it. And yeah. I didn't mean it to come across like that. It was more. Not a right that they engage with us, but because we're so niche and kind of so small with what they do, that that kind of engagement I think would always mean so much to us when we get mm. upper deck on, mm. and uh, and yeah, t- t- they must have a really tough job because we as very hardcore collectors and you guys that have collected for years with the, the comics and really know the history of Marvel c- can obviously really critique what what upper deck do and i think one of the frustrations that people have is that the, the reuse of, of art constantly in the trading cards um and, and that's the kind of engagement that i was trying to get at would, yeah. would it not, if upper deck engage with the kind of community a bit more and and understand that you know there's huge positives with what we have to say but also to steer you know they're making a product for us ultimately and it's really niche, and, and they've got their people that they employ. We've got no idea about their backgrounds as to how much they love or don't marvel. And it, and it was really that's. I really regretted that question, how it came across. It was really more 
wanted it to be a more mm. uh, racing kind of way with upper deck that you know we can they can understand the, the, uh, yeah. the kind of product that works for us. Yeah, I mean, I probably they're, they're in the group here now. Uh, the uh, yeah, they are. Uh, um, they um, I don't know how much they. Well, listen, no, they don't engage that but, much. Um, how much no, they kind they re, of they watch lurk, and pick they up possibly stuff. Lurk. That's what I'm saying. They possibly lurk. Yeah. They definitely check the aftermarket prices, a hundred percent. So I'm, I'm, we're probably lucky in some ways that it is that small that that happens because in Pokemon that doesn't really happen. Mm. You know, that's they'll only do, do stuff like if there's a social media madness over a certain card, then they might print a shitload just to like put off the scalpers as such and raising gotcha. prices. But they don't care. Tops, I don't think Tops really care. They do. they do what they want. Panini, I don't think they care. They're printing everything into the ground in America, aren't they? I've been doing for quite a while. Mm. Fanatics, I don't think they really care. I couldn't imagine. And I, I don't know about these companies too much. Mm. But uh, I, I think we do all right with them. I think the problem is, oh, and I've said it before, yeah. don't create a Discord channel. Don't say you're going to be active in this, that, the other unless you're going to see that through. And if I owned up a deck, besides interviews like with yourself or whatever, I'd I, I, I tell them exactly the same. Do not engage because social media is an absolute fucking nightmare. Yeah. No matter what you do, somebody hates you, somebody yeah. loves you, something's yeah. right, something's wrong. It's a fucking nightmare. Just what they do is stay away. I mean, it's like, could you imagine Grant coming onto a Marvel Jerks podcast? It wouldn't. Because we're from blind and we talk shit about stuff and like, you know, I don't know which Marvel hero would you like to shag or whatever. So you stay away from stuff like that. But, you know, <laughs> if they do it and come on yours once a year, even, you know, whatever, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even put out a bit of a YouTube video. Yeah. It's all cool, isn't it? It's amazing that we, we can get that and yeah. fuck anybody yeah. who thinks otherwise. I'll tell you, you know, who else. Excuse me, sorry. Oh, it's not you, it's me. Um, oh, I had a terrible sleep last night. Not as bad as I'm yours, Jake. Because I'm in bed, lot with my clothes you're, on you're and all. You're in bed. You're, you're in bed. It's 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 your this your this your this your bedtime eyes, um, Jake. That are doing it. I know. Me. Sorry, I can't help it. Um, but the um, <laughs> uh, written house archives. Now, there's a company that that really care about. Oh yes, yes. You know, so oh. I think it's, I think it's um. And and to be to be fair to them, before they went tits up, Inkworks did as well. Inkworks were pretty darn good from from memory. Inkworks have so, some really cool cards, don't they? DC yeah. stuff is amazing. So, so you know, some of these some of these smaller, I think I think I think that is inherently the difference. You know, the size of the um, the size of the company. I think the bigger you are, it's more difficult to have a handle on that and keep that connection with the That's consumer. It. Um, which I think is 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 an um, interesting thing. Um, Chris Carlin, who who was at Upper Deck for for years, and we had him on um, a couple of years ago. Now um, he went over to Collectors, so he's he's doing all the PSA and things like that stuff. Um, and his focus on customer service and customer care is like brilliant, and you can really see it in some of the stuff they do and the stuff they're doing at cons in America, uh, mm. which I think is 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 fabulous to see. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think there's always someone. Listen, there's at least one person in group who is the the saltiest mofo about upper deck. Like every post, even if it's not about upper deck or about the quality of the cards, the comment will turn into that within six words. You know, it will it will flip it, and it's just like I just kind of want to say, look, okay, give it a rest. You're still getting the cards. You're clearly still collecting this newest set that's out. You've just shown us a picture of your rainbow. It's like. We we know you're not keen on them, but give it a rest. <laughs> you know Just that's kind of what I want to say because you know my 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 feeling is, and I say this from a perspective of being in the UK. So you've already had to jump quite a few hurdles to get hold of the product oh, yeah. in the first place. Yeah. You know we're we're blessed that they're producing so much stuff. I mean, you know there were years there were I mean literally years where there were no Marvel cards whatsoever. No one had a license. No one was putting it out. Um, no one's interested in buying it, and and it's interesting over here. I think, I think we still have this challenge. When I had our recon from France, you know, in in France, you say Marvel cards to people, they're like, "Come on, what? I haven't got a clue." Um, over here, 
these people have got a little bit of an awareness of it, but it's still not that much. I mean, Carl, you went to a show. Did you go to a show the other week? No, no, uh, no, no, no. I, I, I bizarrely, I was, I was trying to sell something, and I, I, I didn't in the end. And then I, I had a guy message me who was an artist who done a load of stuff for Upper Deck and other people. Um, got some amazing eyes. Oh, he sent me some uh, videos of the, the stuff they did, and they were like negatives. Oh yeah. The art he drew the arts as negatives. Oh, wow. So when you looked at it through your camera on your phone. It then came to life. It was just amazing. Oh, wow. It was just absolutely stunning. Um, but he was saying that there's a London card show, which is like oh. the biggest card show in, in Europe, um, which I was looking to see if I could go to. Um, or actually looking to get a table at, um, ironically. Mm. Um, and I think I will next year. Um, I'll try and get a table there and take some of the, the art and, and then take some of the original art because that's where yeah. it went for me. Um, and I think talking about you know what we like i ended up going down a path to 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 to, to try to to engage with artists and get original art out of, uh, from people as well to kind of supplement the the trading card so that mm. people can see both um and that's that's been a really interesting journey as well mm. so can you give me a recent example yeah, well, I, I mean, oh, my, my first... Says winking. My first thing... Nice, nice. Wait, wait. Know what I mean? Know what no, I mean, no, sir? Nice, wink, wink. Know what I mean? Well, I know what's coming, yeah. Jakey boy. You well, do. No, I, I, <laughs> no, no. I was thinking, I mean, how did this start? Um, so I think my first... My first bit of original art, I jumped... I can't remember which order it went in. I jumped onto the just go the fpg kickstarter oh yeah 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 that they did and i ended up with um shatterstar okay. you know it was a roll of the dice um shatterstar's I, cool really cool yeah, shatterstar. No, I love it. yes um yeah no i love it i think it's, it's awesome nice yeah, yeah that yeah. that's great that carl isn't it really cool yeah, and ironically, yeah. my my favourite colours are orange, blue, and white. So it, I couldn't really have picked a better well. card if I'd chosen. Nice. Uh, my my racing car was orange, blue, and white. So yeah, it worked. Um, You've got a racing car. <laughs> and then, well, you know, us, us property developers, you know, you've got to spend your money. Yeah, you're, and you're, then you're I, flash, you know, coming in here, waving your water around, you know, loads of and money. And then, um, no, What's and wrong then, with so, that? yeah, so. I just thought that was a great introduction to it. And then um, I stumbled across Kirby's, uh, is it Kirby's? Oh, Annabelle Kirby. Annabelle. Yeah, Kirby's comic uh, car or yeah. something. Yep. Yeah. And so I picked up one of the this year's Unbound pieces. Oh, yes, because um, she reps Freddie in. That's right. Yeah. And it's it's out with the frames at the minute. So, yeah, I don't have that to hand. And, um, and it sort of went on from there. And when we sat down and chatted, you showed me your – Dave Palumbo piece. Yeah, I brought along my cat collection box. Yeah, went out the house. and then obviously, um, and yeah, and so in this box here, I haven't opened it. It's a big I box. Have, I have. Hopefully, it's not been opened by some tow rag at Coventry Customs and replaced Swapped. with something else. Um, yeah, I did a commission. Nice. <laughs> I haven't opened this. Obviously, I I've seen it, but You're I haven't saving it, it for this, weren't you? I was saving Bless it. For you. This. Oh. this is a very sharp knife. Um, yeah. Now here's a here's yeah, a perfect yeah. example of parcel anxiety. And you know, yeah, it is. And you talk about, I mean, you talk about customs, and, and in the UK, we've got two channels. It goes through Heathrow. Yeah. Lang, or it lang. goes through um, Coventry, as Jake alluded to. Now, if it goes through Heathrow, you have no problems whatsoever. No. It's like oh, they're so busy. I beg Whereas to Com <laughs> oh, Really? Oh, yeah, I've had, I've had yeah, I think it's, I think I it's have like too, yeah. <laughs> one in every five you have a, mm. not a problem with, but they're slow. Whereas in Coventry, it's every single parcel. Every single parcel gets held up. Mm. And this must have been on, yeah. customs for, I don't know. Well, FedEx for me comes in via Stansted, and sometimes they're a bit slow. So I think it's just a case of you know uh, w w sheer weight for for want of a better word. 
Yeah, exactly. And also, who's on duty at the time? Because you definitely get jobs worse. I've had, I remember when I had a lot of stuff coming in pre-COVID. I could tell I could tell the handwriting on the documentation. Yeah, that, for... that it had been the same person who was grabbing stuff. So this, just, so this my card came... was marked. <laughs> That's it, basically. Then the old, old, the looking thing. Can somebody well, notice? They, yeah, they definitely or... have a flag list. You know, if it's going to this address, yeah, it course. flags up. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know where to. I don't know where I've put anything there. Um, I watch your um, your podcasts, Ian, and I feel like you. You know, when you put something down, and you're like, "Oh, hang on, what have I done with it?" And that's oh, me at this moment. Right? Yeah. Tell me about it. It's um, it's a. Uh, uh, I mean, this this studio is a shithole. Quite frankly, I'll have to empty <laughs> everything. I, in fact, I will have to because the builders are coming back. Um, empty everything out and start again. So. <laughs> oh, but this all that's not about- fun. This all came about bizarrely through. You talk about how the, the tenuous links as to how things happen. This came about on the back of Flair Ultra Avengers. Right. Because this is where um, Jake and I um, had our boxes come in. And then when I did with, um, when I had my video session with, um, Alistair, he showed me a little piece he had done, commissioned done by Dave Palumbo. And I was like, oh, wow, Dave would do commissions. And and the price that he charged for doing the, um, for doing that piece for Alistair was just such good value. It was just amazing. Um, And it all came about because as most people know, I pull. I was sent that. Lift up a bit. Scale, isn't it? Lovely. So this. Uh, so for those on audio, well, tough. But um, but this is <laughs> the um, r- very rough initial prelim prelim that Dave that, Palumbo did for 2020. Yeah, that and he to hit that, in group, didn't he? And, and to hit that, sold him as blind spots. Yeah, and to hit that particular one um and for those watching it was not watching it was spider-man, it's Spider-Man yeah. was just it just it blew me away mm. and so i then approached um dave palumbo to do me a commission um and as part of that he very graciously i got all of these sent to his house and he very kindly signed nice. Nice. one of each so the that, that's, base a, card. that's a base card. Nice. nice. So I've got the base, the gold signature, the preliminary oh, art, and the what if signed by Dave. <laughs> and that's Lovely. just I mean, a huge thank you to him. He didn't have to. He was just a joy to work with. And so those four cards will get displayed with that. Nice. So cool. you can see the journey from from that card. Mm. From that sketch to those cards, um, and I hope that that does that piece justice when it's done. Mm. Um, and I'll share that when it's finished. But yeah, I'm really stoked. But anyway, I've got a box here which is full of wrapping, um, and it appears that it's in one piece. Okay, nice bubble good. wrap. Nice big. So you don't, you done well. Wrap. Yeah. Yeah. Again, to the man himself. Oh gosh, this one, is like one, the most one piece is just that. You guys are going to have to keep talking. I've got more bubble wrap than no. Well, I'll keep talking. Keep I mean, you know, if you if you if anyone on the listening wants to buy some really good green bubble wrap, Dave Palumbo is clearly a man for that. So hit him up at davesbubblewrap.com. dot com. Um, did he sign want... the bubble? Did he sign the bubble wrap? Has he signed? No, I don't. No. Uh, if he's not I... signed the bubble wrap, <laughs> I'd be putting in the complaint. Wait yeah. a minute, you signed the cards. Exactly. You couldn't be asked signing the bubble wrap, Dave. It's like, what's wrong with you? Uh, otherwise, no, uh, Palumba's Poppers is the other company he should, he should get going. <laughs> um, but, uh, and so, yeah, so, you know, you can reach out to these guys and, 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 and yeah, they'll, they'll, you know, you see some of the sketch card artists have got, you know, years before they can do your commission. Um, yeah, so this... Is what I had done. Here we go. Oh. oh. 
That's amazing. That's amazing, that's, yeah. That's Venom versus Spider Man. Yeah. Wow. I, and it I, is. I mean, I haven't obviously I haven't seen it in hand. That's that was the unveiling. And uh Wow. That's it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. The, the building in the background and everything there, you know, it's just like full of detail. Yeah, and what's and what's so nice is the fact that, you know, that was the brief that I gave him. Um and it was a, a joy to work with on it, an absolute joy. Um and I'd done some very loose sketches as to the kind of what I wanted specifically because you don't see you don't see the you don't see any battles of that perspective. No. I haven't no, not seen really, one. No. They're all side on. Pull it away just a bit more, just so that we can see the full top to bottom. That's just amazing. That's yeah, really so good. good Look it? at that. Mm. Wow. I love it. And you know what? What I love is um, his Spider-Gwen from the Platinum set that's coming up. That has got that similar kind of perspective and also colour palette for the background with the buildings as well. So uh, yeah, it's clearly a, they, they, they feel like kind of sibling pieces, if, if you like. That was all Kyle's idea. Kyle's going to take credit yeah. for that when it comes out, just because I did that, yeah. me and my mate Dave. <laughs> I told Dave, you want to get yeah. that spider Gwen sorted, pal? You know, well, th- the last one was <laughs> creatively want, so... blocked, and then you commissioned him, and he's like, ah, all of a sudden, I know what I'm doing for Marvel Platinum. Look Brilliant. at this now. <laughs> Cal sorted me out. I'm a he's master. Like, he's like human laxative. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's. Yeah, I feel quite pleased with that. Mate, that's amazing. Well done. Yeah, yeah really cool. That's cool. What are you going to do with the bubble wrap? Uh, I think with all the other bubble wrap I've got, and when I sell stuff back to people in the States, I was going to say, say that's Palumbo's bubble wrap. I'll tell you what, you can have it wrapped in regular bubble wrap for now, or you can have Palumbo bubble wrap, be $10 extra. Absolutely. Nice, yeah. really. Might as well. So, so, yeah. So, that's that is is that, and I've got paper and all sorts. So, yeah. Wow, no, that's so that. cool. That is really and cool. I know isn't it? I know that you, you you were obviously chatting about that particular piece. So I sat there slightly smug last week listening to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he because <laughs> he has put it on his Instagram, but of course no one knew. I mean, I knew because you showed me, Crikey, you showed me what four months ago, I think, at least. Yeah, that it was that being it was, worked. Yeah, worked definitely. Out. And I was like, Ooh. so thank you. I appreciate you holding on because I know you've had that box sat up there. Yeah, he's done well. Showed me photos yeah. of it, and I've been like, I've been like, ah. Oh. So thank you for I spending mean, that. And you know, you look at and you look at some of the prices that, that and, the, and the numbers that people mm. are talking about for original art all of a sudden, and and it's just nuts. And yeah, I, I can't highly recommend working with Dave highly mm. enough. And, and obviously, yeah. for me, twenty twenty was my introduction. Yeah. From, my, from per, me personally with trading cards, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it just squares that circle for yeah, me, and it's get you first. it's um, just yeah. Can we talk? Can we talk about that for a minute, boys? Sketch cards and prices and blah blah blah. Because yeah, go. Well, I'm going to talk about it anyway. So, <laughs> sketch cards they've gone ridiculous prices. Even the sketch cards that. And not my style, not my taste, and, and this, that, the other. And Original yeah, bargains art are available is what it is. eBay now. Bargains are available. Exactly, yeah. I would suggest you look for black cats, at least. Black cats, Because they're yeah, some of the, yeah. the best bargains yeah. you got, usually got, find got anyway. tasty selection of black cats for you, folks. I'm sure they're in the UK with global shipping. There might still be a green black cat PMG there. I wish I could afford that. Ian. Green and the purple. No, the purple's the one that's on eBay. Um, is that- I've got it on there as my yes. I know the market's low at the moment, but this is my price. <laughs> yeah, listing. of course. Yeah, um, yeah. and um, you know, but, if someone wants it, but someone wants it. What I want to talk about is uh, I don't have many sketch cards actually. Uh, I have a few here and there. You know, the ones I like are so badly overpriced. So I I was looking for you know well, I like X twenty three, a PC X twenty three, and Wolverine. I can't afford. If I had the choice, it'd be Wolverine first over over X twenty three, but I can't afford the price that the cards go for. You know, it's, it's just too much for me. Popular character, I can't justify it. Mm. So I was looking at X twenty three sketches, and there's a Glebe sketch that's been on there for a while, seven fifty from X Men Metal, and it's really cool. And I thought, mm. and then I'm looking through comics as I do, 
and comes up a Joe Rubinstein sketch of X23 on comic sketchbooks in a CGC slab. It was maybe $200. And it's like, I've got a legend there. One of my mm-hmm. favourite colours is Wolverine, the 82 limited series. Yeah. Which I, I do have one, but I'd like one to four in a high grade. And I'm thinking, I've got a legend there. Rubenstein on the comic cover, which is big, and yeah, it's a pencil, but I, I like yeah. pencils. Yeah, that you know, if you can't afford sketch cards and they are you want on sketch cards, or you're just not willing to pay that money, mm. just have a look at some of the comic cover sketches because the the faster for the artist to produce, yeah, and you could even consider sending a comic cover to an artist as well. Uh, and it's just another way around buying original art, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, they are very affordable. I've got two blank covers um, that I bought from Tony Perna. Just yeah. when COVID was kicking off, actually. Um, ones of Spider-Gwen, ones of Black Cat, and they're ink on Amazing Spider-Man covers. And they are stunning. Yeah, and yeah. They are, yeah. you know, they're a fraction of, of the licensed cardstock prices. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a good way. That's really interesting. Yeah. No, yeah, that's really interesting because I, I'm not a big sketch card fan. Mm. Um, I think, I think again, you know, when, when Masterpieces Twenty was out, you know, you got a sketch card a, a box, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. We all know that, that the sketch cards have reduced in number, yada yada yada. I did. I, I think if I'd have pulled something that was amazing out of it, you'd then mm. buy into sketch cards. Yeah. Um, I got some that were okay. I got a sketch card out of Spider-Man Metal, and it sucks. I'm not going to get it out because it, it's that bad. And I love the artist stuff. Are we still They've talking gotten... about the sketch card? Sorry. That was really childish <laughs> of me, but I couldn't resist. <laughs> uh, and I love the artist stuff, and, 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 and the artist has got nothing to do with Marvel on their website mm. or anything ever. They had pictures of fruit and flowers and stuff. Really? Um yeah, uh, and so they might be marvellous in their little world, but no tie into Marvel whatsoever. So, yeah, uh, I'm, so I'm quite glad my um, Premier Tim isn't going to turn up all of a sudden. Yeah, I um Sorry, I'm just sending – I'm sending some pictures to our group chat because I am going to share screen with them in a moment just so that um, we can get, get sight on them um, because I – I should be more prepared. Oh, what? Why are y'all pissing about? Why are y'all pissing about, mate? Carl, how long did it take the commission from start to finish so the process? You messaged Dave to somebody else, I think you said, did you? And can you just no, walk I us didn't. through that? No, so what happened was I um so it's a, I uh, when did we get our Fleer Ultra stuff? March time? January, February, March. I'd say about March, yeah. I'm just trying to work yeah. it out now, yeah. So it's so, so yeah. So basically, as soon as I had that chat with Alistair and he showed me his commission that he he had had done with Dave, I just reached out to Dave on on um, Messenger and said, "That sounded, you know, nice. yeah, literally just said, are you, uh, you know, uh, 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 this is a little bit of my story, you know, this is where I am with the cards and stuff.'" And then he messaged me back and said, "Yeah, I've got a couple of." I've got several commissions on. I'll be able to drop onto it later in the year. Um, bounce me some ideas over. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, so from start to finish, it, it was probably eight eight months, give or take. Wow. Okay. You've done well, haven't you, there? That's yeah, like... definitely. Definitely. I mean, it depends yeah, on your luck as well, doesn't it? I think a little bit of right place, right time. I think Dave was moving, and so he, he, was, he, he, he dropped off a bit maybe from – Taking right. stuff on, and then he got moved, and then once he'd moved, he was he was a bit freer, so he was looking to fill his diary back up. But um, yeah, so super lucky, just just timing. I did I did mention also- to Dave that you you were going to reveal this this episode, and he, he was like he was like oh brilliant, that's amazing. I'm amazed he's held on so long. Um, in retrospect, well, I probably should have said I probably should have said Dave, do you just want to parachute in? At a certain time, and just be there for the opening. Yeah, for uh, ten minutes. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to intrude on his on his Sunday because um, I know he's got his studio back up. But he started his own uh, Patreon 
um, now as well. I will find. Yeah, I'll find the details of it because I feel I feel we should um, uh, we should absolutely pimp him. Um, I'm just going to share screen once these load into my computer. This computer is so slow. Oh my! Yeah, and if I mean, if artists are cool with doing that, it's it's just. It's great, isn't it? You know, yeah, can you imagine absolutely. the Rolling Stones doing that? Or you know what I mean? I don't know. P. Yeah. Diddy or they just yeah. make a wanky documentary, don't they? Yeah, exactly. you know, you're actually seeing something really cool. They can go. make a wanky documentary. So there's the uh, Tony Perna um, cover, Black Cat cover. That's so cool. I was isn't telling it? you about, um, yeah. which is just stunning. I mean, you know, look at it. I mean, it's it's a Perna. True and true. I was just um, going to say exactly that. It's a perna, isn't it? You look at yeah. the detail, it's just. I mean, it's it, a it, perna. if it wasn't written there, you'd Brilliant. know it's a perna because it's just, you know, it's just, yeah. just Tony. Um, and I also got a Spider Gwen. I refuse to call it Ghost Spider, I'm sorry. Which is just. <laughs> which is just That's cool, the same as well, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I see, isn't, not many people do a moon like Tony does. There's something about the mm-hmm. way he does his moons. And he's kind of. I suppose he didn't put your face in the background there. Well, you know, you know, it has been done. But uh, what I want to show you was yeah. um, Joe Rubenstein. When I went to my one and only so far American con last year, I'm, of course I he was yeah. there. Um, yeah, yeah. And he had this. Um, so basically, you could go up to his his stall, and he had uh, comic. Uh, I don't think they're comic backing boards, but they're that sort of sort. I mean, maybe they are comic backing yeah, boards. Yeah. I don't know. But he had pieces where he'd already done the pencils in a box and you flick through them and there were, there were well over a hundred in there and you could flick through yeah. them and, and you could buy them as is for X price or he'd income mm. for you. And he had the price listed on, on that as well. And each bag yeah. was different. So, you know, one might be, Oh, it's 80, $80 for this as it comes or 120 inked come back in two hours kind of vibe. Yeah. So, yeah. So I pulled out this black cat, which, you can't really see very well there. Can I get it to open any bigger? No. Oh, cool. Ah, what's my computer doing? Oh, ah, what's going on there now? I don't know. I've got no idea. My um. Oh no, it's all gone tits. It's all gone a bit tits up. Let me open image in a new tab, and then I should be able. You're to You're not zoom professional into it. today. What's oh, going I've got on? No I idea what's going on. Oh. You're not professional. I'm not. Professional. Yeah, Ka- Carl's got this amazing piece of work. There you go. Look at that. And we're just like useless. Look at that. Banging. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, isn't it? I mean, that's, yeah, that's yeah. quite some pose. I mean, you know, it's almost gynecological, that pose. But yeah. Yeah, I'm sure um, a lot of people like to be in that pose. It's um, it's brilliant. And there he is. He's, and he, was, he was such a dry, dry, uh, curmudgeonly sense of humour. It was brilliant. Um, so I believe so, I've heard that before. Yeah, we're we, taken the wrong way, I've heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, 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 shared, we shared some filthy jokes, put it that way. Um, but no. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can get some really good pieces. Really good pieces that have nothing to do with a Marvel trading card, as in they've not been put on that format. Um, yeah, yeah, for, yeah, you know, bang in price. Um, yeah, just reach out to the artist because you know, there's loads of um artists out and there. And even mine, when, when I got that, uh, I was willing to stand the 20% uh import duty, yeah, and I was willing to stand uh the extra postage. Yeah, because I just thought it was so much of a good price. Mm. So yeah, that might have paid thirty percent over what it was really selling for. Yeah, but yeah, I just yeah. thought I need that in my hands as soon as possible. Yeah, and I can't remember. It might not have been two hundred. I can't remember. To be honest, but it was round about that, you know. And, and, and I just thought, just talk, just talking about import duty. Obviously, Dave, when he um, because it's all invoiced properly. You have to put all the invoices in with your customs declaration when it comes through. Mm. And fair play to Dave, even though I sent, I had to fill in a load of forms, um, they wanted a statement from the artist to say that what was being, what was sent in was true and true and correct. And oh, Dave was on holiday in Kenya or somewhere in in africa that's right yeah he went to africa didn't he recently yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 again amazing it, he took some time out of his day to email you know the uk customs <laughs> um and original art is charged at who knew five percent oh wow okay who knew so there i paid go. on that Do you know why it's ca- of- you can count it you can count it as like a pension pot, so it gets tax relief. 
okay. So, so when, so when yeah, you I see like Sotheby's that. and this, that, the other, <laughs> yeah, that's why they buy original art. There's hardly any capital gains tax on it, same as like Rolex watches and stuff like that. Oh, interesting. So interesting. it's completely different. Can you can you imagine like Banksy, and they're saying, "Listen, Banksy, you, all your customers are going to have to pay that twenty percent." The millions of people would be like, "Wait a minute, you know, <laughs> fuck that." So you imagine the politicians and the this that the other who create the rules, the accountants yeah. and taxmen, all so the ones with millions, from it as well, they're sure. going to make sure that yeah. that original art is five percent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so while we're on it, here is uh, p- p- Patreon dot com forward slash David Palumbo. No, right, okay. Is. So go and join it, kids. Um, yeah, he's got various levels of stuff. He's already got nine things up there. He's been making some videos of his process. and uh, Yeah, because I know he's got his new studio. Look, you can do a Spider Gwen original art early access. So he right, okay. put it on there earlier, and then, you know, it was obviously then revealed. So, yeah, go and check it out, guys. Um, it's so cool that artists do that. It's amazing yeah. that it can become... And, yeah, th- yeah they're going to... Um, there's a financial benefit for them, of course mm-hmm. there is, you know, so so there should be well, as you well. Have but... that direct, you have that direct engagement yeah. with the with the artist as well, which is, you know, has a has a value to it. I, I know... Um, Huge uh, value. Huge. In, Ingrid Hardy, who um, did the Art of Sketch Card books, she's had a Patreon for, for years um, and has been doing exclusive content for it, you know, and she still does it for the stuff that she's doing, so... Uh, so quite a few trading card artists, as well as the you know bigger guys doing the original art, like uh, David and and Dan DeSantis, have Patreons as well. So it's definitely worth checking them out. Uh, Jake, has your computer camera gone all funny again? I'm Just trying. Some... Yeah, I'm trying. Do you want to see my feet? Uh, lovely. Yeah, I'm trying. Lovely. Thanks for that. It's it's not working it's not... out. Yeah, I'm glad it's not on smell tell... vision. No. Oh. oh, there it is. Back. Just briefly. We've gone again. I've gone. Over You've enough. gone again. You're all blurry. For those in audio, well, um, it's he's blurry. But for those on video, th- I'm still probably, blurry. Probably an improvement. Probably a better, a better yeah. thing. That I mean, yeah. blurry. It's honest, probably better. It? I mean, we can still see Carl's beautiful cheekbones, so we're okay. I've there. got a story. I've got a story for you about important, important things. Carl Tell just me. reminded me that. So I got a card, a green PMG sent over to me. It was worth a couple of grand. Mm-hmm. And I kept saying to the bloke, do not, it's pissing me off that. Anyway, I kept saying, don't put two grand on it. Don't put two grand. I'll, I'll take the chance. I don't care. Do not put two grand on it. Mm-hmm. Put $50. It's up to me. It's my fault. It was stuck in Coventry for ages. They put two grand on it. I didn't know at the time. Oh. So it said, right, we need something for an email. There's no value on this card. It said, we need something by email. So I thought, right, He's not only put the two grand wrong, there's no point bothering with him. So I just set up an email with his name straight away and uh, sent it to Coventry Post Office. They said it's worth $50. Maybe I shouldn't tell people that, but that's another top tip. <laughs> well, that's what I did. I just created an email in his name and said it's worth $50. To save yourself that's exactly what tax. I did, yeah. Um, I will say... It. I will say because someone will comment, um, I uh, that unfortunately I, uh, someone will comment. I won't risk my business, and my reputation, and of course we're not. You know, we're not saying that people have to do that. You know, I know that there are business sellers in the US that you know they. And it's unfair of them to ask them to risk their their business yeah, and that, you know, all that. So you shouldn't yeah. ask people. No, so, I never ask people to do it yeah. a cheaper invoice. Never. No. Yeah. Well, this I, was a I, private I, I sale. I certainly won't do on on a uh, on an eBay sale. I never do that on an eBay sale. Um, no, I'd never I do it to a business either. Um, no, I just, wouldn't. You know, know. There's an etiquette to that. Um, effectively, you're asking you're but asking this... you're transferring the risk to the seller as well. But right. just to clarify, mine was actually a trade. Oh, he yeah, wanted yeah. my X twenty three. I sent the X twenty three next day shipping. Yeah, he sent me some some cash in the card, and mine took yeah. took months. Yeah, and it now, took me trades, about six weeks because he put yeah. two grand on. Yeah, for trades, you don't get yeah. the full value. Yeah, it don't no, no, it's never. No. Um, I mean, if you're sending it by an insured service and you want it to be insured for that amount, that's a slightly different kettle of fish. Um, but yeah, I had a guy 
Um, we sorted it out in the end, um, but um, I had a recent trade come in and it was just for some base cards. And it turns out the service that was used just, you know, its default was a hundred dollars. So I had a, yeah, yeah. I had a, I had um, a customs thing come through for 18 quid. I was like, oh, you know, that's more than the value of the cards. So, um, but I did get Every them. Every time they're seeing, isn't it? But yeah. But it's also, you know, um, the other thing with the Royal Mail is that the tax, I've often had it that they will calculate the tax in pounds based on whatever the number is on mm. the item they're getting, regardless of the currency. So they'll see, let's just say $50, and they'll they'll do a tax calculation based on 50 pounds. That's true, yeah. I yeah, that too, yeah. You, you get that all the time. And then yeah. they charge you uh eight or eight between eight and ten pounds, depending on who it is, admin fee. Yeah, processing. Yeah, which is which is just their fee for stopping it and telling you that they've stopped it. Um, yeah. So, you know, so very quickly it can actually get, you know, to more than the value of the cards if it's a low value card as well. Um so yeah. Anyway, such the, is the, life, kids. Such so the is long life. And short, the, the long and short of it for anyone who's in the UK listening to this. What would you say is your kind of top three things to to kind of do to get cards into the to get cards here? Knowing that we're playing you in someone else's backyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say, well, mine are one, find a buddy in America or a service in America, because there are services that do this. Yeah. Um I can't remember what they're called off the other hands, but in, in the NFL UK card groups. There's like a, a a major commercial service that will receive for you. Um, I no, think I there's think a couple of them. I, Ship my cards think, or something like that. Yeah, Ship my cards is one, but there are other yeah. ones. Mm. If you're gonna do that, you're most probably better to look for whoever do all the sneakers from America. And I would probably use that service because they're probably okay. one of the best. Right, it's, it's okay. been going on for years. That yeah, but I, right. I don't use any of them. But apparently yeah. they're okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's one way of doing it. The second thing would be um, if you're going to buy through a company that will ship overseas, like David Adams. David Adams, from memory, and Carl, you've ordered with them more recently, will always use FedEx, and they will always charge full value because FedEx will play by the tax rules. So they'll always come in through that route. So you'll always pay. Like In fact, I've I've paid more when it's coming from David Adams FedEx than I would have done if it had come in through Royal Mail or Parcel Force. That's um, right, yeah. It was UPS for me that it came through yeah. with, and then I got oh, stung randomly, not only for the VAT, for some arbitrary... I thought it was a scam originally mm -hmm. um, over the phone. I got stung for another couple of hundred pounds for another 10% because trading cards fell under some random category for shipping. So it, it was like a 30% um yeah, due to on it um but you know because i'm assuming that you, you dave and adams you're not getting the tax back from the states no no and you're paying the tax in the states and you're paying the tax yeah. in the yeah. uk because yeah. you're paying so, their tax because they'll pass it on to the consumer so yeah so yeah. so yeah. Um, oh, we, you, we, could set, we could set up we could set up an import export company between us then when they come in, we pretend we're exporting them. Then we don't have to pay any VAT. That, that You've got it all sorted. Change. You've got it all yeah, sorted. Absolutely. And you, um, you, you're you can, well yeah. versed in that, Jake, with the Pokemon as well. So, yeah. Um, if you're going to do EPAC um, or ComC, have it set up with an address in a US state that pays no tax. Um, yeah. Because for the first year or so I was on EPAC, I had it registered Oof. at someone's address a mate of mine and it was a state where there was tax so i was paying more for every epac purchase than i than i needed to just because the address i had registered so i moved it to a new hampshire address of, of friends of ours um which i still use even though they don't live there anymore uh, but i have to remember when i'm going to ship stuff from com c which doesn't happen that often i have to remember to swap the addresses over um, that's so basically, any, anyone who doesn't know, I've done it with cards I've got on ComC and I've sold to people through the groups or whichever. And when you send the package from ComC, any cards, you can send those cards to any address. Yeah. 
yeah, within yeah. the US. Yeah. Com well, COMC, you that. can send <laughs> anywhere globally. EPAC, you yeah. can't. So if you're going to no, ship from EPAC, can, so. yeah. So if you're if you're um, in the UK and you're on EPAC, move the cards to COMC and then have them. Then you can have. Then you have the option to have them shipped to you in the UK because COMC will ship globally. But the EPAC, because Upper Decks license is for the North American market, you can't register a UK address with EPAC to no. purchase or to have the card shipped to you. So. Um, and so I think that's two pieces of advice. My third piece of advice would be to um, uh, network, be in the groups, you know, speak to people in America, you know, or wherever they live talking to stuff because that's how you build up stuff. There's there's a, there's very few of us in the UK. I mean, there's us three. There's Alistair, um, Al Wilson. Uh, there's mm. um, Gingy. I don't know how much Gingy collects, but I know he, I, I don't know what he collects. No, but, no, no, no. Not too and much then, at the minute. And you know, there are other people within the UK scene as your mate Carl, but he's got no social media presence. Romy, bless him, has now passed away um early this year. Um so you know that there, there are few and far between in the UK. Um I've I've seen folks come into the hobby in the UK. Uh oh, there's Daniel in London, Daniel Barker. Um but I've seen uh, for for that half a dozen people, I've seen the same number come into the hobby in the last two years and then bounce out again because mm. they just mm. didn't have they they just got frustrated with it or it was just too difficult whatever you know so it is it is one of those things you know you're buying an American product you know an American art form and now you know rewind ten years written house stuff you could get over here same week of release. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, dude, uh, Rittenhouse stuff would come in, no problem. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I used to get cases of, uh, when I was buying cases from uh, Rittenhouse stuff, I got Dangerous Divas, Marvel 70th through um, a UK dealer called Derek's Trading Cards. He used to, he still does actually, display at the London Comic Marts that happen at the uh, Royal National Hotel, Hotel in Russell Square every two months. Um, and they're primarily comics, but he's always rocked up and displayed trading cards of all different stripes, not just Marvel. Um, so, uh, but even now, you know, as a UK trader, he couldn't get US product without jumping through hoops. Mm. There yeah. is yes. um, a dealer on eBay um, based in the Northeast, I think. Northwest, sorry, uh, time to sell surplus. How they get stuff yeah. in, from America, I don't know. Um I've had some interesting experiences with them over the years and my feelings about them are, are on MCCW, so I won't repeat them here. Um, but, um, but yeah, they, um, they do get stuff in pretty quickly, but, but there's, I do there's have a premium a, to it. I do have a question. I don't know whether or not uh, you'll, you'll know the answer to this, but do you think there's any chance of Upper Deck getting a license here now that we're not in break now that we're, we've, Obviously, we're not in Europe per se. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think one has anything to do with the other necessarily. Um, no, it not? No, I think I think you know France could be within or without Europe. It's 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 considered as as you you know we are still on the continent. We're still it's part the of the continent there, of Europe. Yeah. So you've got to think of it from that kind of lens. It's about territories rather than political jurisdictions. I think. Well, um, well, the, 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 the won't, the won't, in the UK the won't be the, well yeah at the moment certainly um sorry Jake, the, what the won't be the, the the won't be the revenue let's be honest about it yeah i mean even in even in america the, there wasn't really there isn't a huge revenue i know you see all the openings and you know all the prices and this that the other one blah 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 it's tiny Mar oh, Marvel, it's even, tiny. even in the us yeah, yeah. Mm. it's tiny they just won't ever be the revenue for yeah. that to, yeah, happen and you know people can build it up as much as they want and blah 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 you know compare it to sports cards and let's have it this that the other it's a long long way mm. from being anything like that isn't it so yeah. I just can't see it it's coming still a niche thing. to the, the you know EU That's not, it's not a bad thing that it's a niche thing yes no. we all want to grow the hobby but we're never we're never going to be we're never going to be the size of the Star Wars scene we're never no, going to be the never. size of the um uh, sports scene, absolutely. It's just, it's just no. Yeah, you know, it's just not, not going to happen. I'm sorry. Well, uh, I mean, why, why do you think that is, Ian? Do you think that's because we're 
we, you know, with the sports scene, you've always got the next big rookie, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. You've always got kids coming through and yeah. that very first trading card of the person who's going to be the yeah. MVP at the Super yeah. Bowl or what, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. yeah. With Marvel and even with Star Wars, you know, you see that with when they bring the new characters in that that get some real traction, like a, yeah. Ahsoka and things. With yeah. Marvel, you're almost there's nowhere for it to grow, really. Is there from a character development? No. Uh, you know, I know they've gone down the road with the multiverse with Spider Man and yeah, yeah. and bizarrely, I watched Spider Man last night. The um, uh, across the Spider Verse, and it's just brilliant. Um, oh, the second one or the first? Yeah, the second one. Second one, and, bonkers. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just brilliant, but bonkers. And, but, and, and and that's where you can see it going, can't you, with the what yeah, if yeah. And, the, and the and the MCU? And yeah, but there's absolutely. no new characters, are there? Everybody wants really three or four of the characters. Yeah, don't they? I think. I mean, listen, it's uh, the thing is with sports stuff. It it it's there, and it's very it's very much. Sports crosses over into cultural and tribalism. So it's very much like people feel an ownership and a kinship. You know, there's that fandom uh, with football. Um, hence, season tickets. You know, people You know, people do that sort of thing. Uh, with something like comics and cards, it's a, it's, a, it's a ephemeral thing. It's a throwaway thing. You may come across it growing up. You may not. You know, you might... It might be a case of, you know, you're out with little Timmy and he goes left into the My Little Pony aisle rather than he goes right into the Pokemon aisle. It could be as, as arbitrary as that because he's not, you know, he's not immersed in it. It's not, it's not everywhere. You know, when's the last time, and I will say this even to people in America, when's the last time you saw an ad on television for Marvel trading cards? Whenever. Because it doesn't happen. You know, that, no. that, that, you know that the people who make them won't spend that money because that's not, you know, it's not a wide reach demographic. Now, to be fair, you won't ever have seen that probably for um, uh, a Star Wars trading card product either. I don't know if they do advertising for um, sports cards in America, but the thing is, and here's the rub, they don't have to because the awareness is yeah. already there. People know they exist. Sports card shops are everywhere in America because it is a, it is an Americana thing. You know, bas baseball cards been around since what, 30s, 40s? You know, easily. Easily, yeah. So, you know, it's yeah. woven into the DNA of something that is a thing. You know, a baseball card is as is big a thing as a baseball mitt. I mean, you know, there was a movie. Um, it wasn't a very good movie. A Kevin Smith movie called um, Cop Out. And it was all about a character. Who, I think uh, Bruce Willis was in it. It was all about a character who had a really valuable trading card stolen. And it was a baseball card. So, you know, mm. if, if the concept of, of the thing is big enough that a movie plot can hinge on it, game on. You know, you're never going to have a challenge to have the cut through with that. But no one's ever going to do a movie with, with Bruce I mean, well, not with Bruce Willis, because obviously he's, he's, he's got his, his health problems. But, you know, it's with a, a Mr. A-list movie star, you know, the next Bruce Willis, you're never going to have a movie where someone's Marvel masterpiece's double impacts is stolen. There's not enough people give a shit who <laughs> know what that is. You know. Um, so you know, I, I, listen. I'm just, I'm just kind of talking off the top of my head here because I don't, I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about this because I'm kind I of, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the boat that I'm in with this, and the more people that are in the boat, great. But um, I think, I think there is, um, there are peaks and troughs to it, and people, as many people as are perceived to be coming into the hobby right now, I'm pretty sure that as many people are leaving you know i know there's some people who've been in in the group for for years who've gone over the last year who've got massive collections that's not to say they've stopped collecting but i think they are you know they are uh you know as many people are turned off by the state of the hobby as it is today as are in you know entranced and attracted by it and that's not Which... a bad thing you'll always have that churn you have that churn and everything. You know, have that churn with Disney. My kid's now getting to an age where she's less keen on Mickey and Minnie. Yeah, of course. You know, she's aging out. It's just, it's, go through phases. It's fine. It's just the evolution of the hobby, isn't it? Or even yeah. the devolution of the hobby, whichever it is, it'll constantly change. Yeah. You know. And if it didn't, it'd be boring. You know? Well, yeah. yeah. You kind of, you know, the, the, it, it will shed its skin. 
you know, there, there will there will be new people in the hobby talking about the hobby next month, the month after, next year. There'll be new content creators talking about the hobby. There'll be fewer content creators talking about the hobby. You know, how long will this podcast go on for? I don't know. You know, uh, I think there's going to the be stuff is, to talk about for ages, but you know, it, how long it, I want to do it is another issue. It, it kind of doesn't doesn't matter, does it? To a point, because one of the beautiful things about this hobby is kind of how engaging it can be with the people that produce the stuff. Yeah. And I think I think for this hobby specifically, that's what's really nice about it. Mm. Um, and, you know, with Upper Deck engaging the way they do with you and coming on every now and again and keeping that kind of enthusiasm for the, for the releases that are upcoming is great because I haven't got a clue what's coming next year. No, I can't get excited about anything next year because I have no idea what's coming. Nothing... You know, we've had all Past of this. February. With... Yeah, we've had so much this year, haven't we? I mean, I know we've got a new flare coming next year. Yeah, yeah, there um, is. A... There'll be a new flare next year. I don't think I. I don't think they'll release masterpieces next year. I know masterpieces twenty two was a year late, but that I. I think they'll push what would have been twenty four. People always assume because it's never actually really been stated. I don't think that it is a two year cycle thing. Um, doesn't have to be. Um, it'll be when it's ready, I guess. So, um, I mean, unless they've said it on another piece of content I haven't seen, but um, I, I always got the impression from them that it was, you know, yes, it they aim for an every two year thing, but if they miss it, you know, as they did with, you know, this year with with COVID and it came out a year later, it's not a bad thing. It's worth waiting for. Uh, what else next year? Fleer Ultra. Wolverine. Midnight, uh, Midnight Suns apparently is due, but Grant didn't mention it, so I'm not sure. It might slip through his cracks. Fleer Ultra Wolverine. I know Fleer Ultra Fantastic Four has been mooted. Four, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, there's 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 stuff coming. Um, I'm sure they'll do more um, annual. Unbound. There'll be always unbound. annual. There'll be annual. There'll be annual. You know, so there's stuff that's going to carry on. Definitely. There'll be more metal sets. Oh, my giddy aunt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the next metal set? I saw some sketch card blanks. I, I did, you know, I can't remember. I can't remember what it was now. Anyway, I saw it was Aven- was it it Avengers. Yeah, that's it. Avengers metal. Yeah, pretty sure that was it. Um, so you know, there's there's stuff around. I mean, listen, I I I know about you, but I pray for a day when Black Cat won't be in a set, so I could have a little rest because I'm a <laughs> right, there's drunk, drunkenly stumbling around the ring. I mean, to be fair, she wasn't in she wasn't in the last three boxes I've opened, which I can see here, which is What If, Allegiance, and Loki. She wasn't in any of those, so I am getting my wish, much as it may seem like I'm protesting too much. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean. Carl, it's it's difficult to kind of set your long range radar um a little bit on that front. Um because if you're not into your MCU, it's not as if you can say, Oh, we know there's MCU product X coming up, therefore I'll get excited for the trading card set that will come a year later or whenever it will be. So yeah, tricky one that. Tricky one that. What's the future for you, Jake, in terms of your cause I know you're X twenty three, but I don't know. Mm. You don't strike me as a character collector who's got a list of X23 cards tucked away like some of us crazy mofos. Do you just get what catches your eye? Or is it is it a long time? I get what I like, or... yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, if there's artwork I don't like, it, I don't care about it. I'm not. You don't you know, have to. It's got to be something I like. Just, 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 uh, yeah. No, no, no. I don't get the urge. You know, I, I collect multiples, don't I? Yeah, so like yeah. multiple sets or multiple cards of the same image, mm. just the way I am. Uh, I've been delving more into comics at, at recently, to be mm. honest with you. Because I've just got a bit exhausted with all the card mm. drama and this, mm. that, the other. Not the sets, just the drama. So I've been looking mm. more at comics and that. And, I've got uh, that Blade Runner. Enjoy, enjoy my base cards. Oh, yeah, cheers for that, mate, as well. Yeah. If you know anyone who wants to buy a pretty decent-sized comic collection, with loads of Spider-Man in, let me know. Because I'm offloading all of it. <laughs> Shame I'm not a Spider-Man guy. Yeah, I'm not a comic guy. Yeah, no. But if you know someone who is, send him my way. I, uh, I tell you what I did. I tell you what I did get, and this is a little bit random and stuff. But I did get good. pick up pick up this. Oh, what is what is that? Which is 
the New Zealand Mint. Amazing Spider-Man 15. Is it? Is it like a metal card? Yeah, it's like a little. It's a yeah. It's a it's a copy of the comic. I mean, I can't get the damn thing out. Now, but, oh. but but yeah, so it's a, a little tiny um, two dollar coin. What? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, that's, cool, a, that's a coin. That's a coin that, is that legal tender new, in New Zealand. Yeah, and they do these little that's tiny. Nuts. Coins. Oh, and so they've got all sorts. They've got Star Wars. They've got all sorts. New New Zealand mints. And so what? I mean, this is this is tiny. This is like an inch by inch and a half at best. But it's just lovely. And they've got all of the first covers. Well, they're doing all of the first covers right. of, of all of the the big characters, so you've got Thor and etc. But I clocked something that came through a random email where they're doing trading coins. So they've just done a Star Wars release of right. trading coins, and they're bigger than that. And you basically spend three hundred New Zealand dollars on a box about that big, right? And in it, it's got two coins, and they're trading cards. And they've just done a Marvel one, and there was fifty base cards, and uh, right. there was fifty cards, and there was ninety nine of the first of the uh, you know tier one, and then yeah, yeah. 25 of tier two, et cetera, et cetera. And there are 299 New Zealand dollars, and you get two in a box. Wow. They were sold out in about an hour. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> yeah, just wow. sold out. Uh, and they had a limited edition solid gold coin, one of 10, that obviously people are chasing. So they were literally like, yeah, literally sold out almost straight away. Wow. Okay, this is new. So I, I, yes. I, I mean, new to me. Google it yourself, folks. I'm there's no point in me putting a link on there if they're sold out at no. source. But you know, um, wow, New Zealand mint. Yeah. So the same as the Royal Mint, obviously. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But in New, Zealand, in New Zealand, and they do all sorts. They do little. Well, they just do all sorts of silver struck wow. and gold okay. struck from anything from Indiana Jones to Star Wars to. And there's all sorts in there, all sorts on it. And they get cracking value, some of them, on, on eBay, some of the second-hand stuff. Yeah, I thought so. Those Kiwis getting busy with it down there. There's, there's another rabbit hole for you. And yeah. Then, um, so, and I might do avoid like, that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, me and too. I do, and I do like Oh, those, yes. These. Yes. They are lovely. Yeah. They are Which lovely. are bronze cards. Bronze. from. Uh, yeah, and they're just lovely. Are they the ones where there were four of them? There was a cap, a four, yeah, uh, Hulk, Spidey, I think, and Fantastic Four and X Men oh, and four. Stuff. Right, okay, okay, and they just they just love them. Yeah, nice. I, I it's just a cavern of delights you're in there. Jake's on his sick bed. You're in yeah. this this room with just like you're pulling oh, treasure I can just, from every I can just, angle. I can just turn around and pick oh, stuff up there. Left, right, and centre, and, 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 and stuff, and, and you know, we, we can go down the road of, um, we can go down the road of like, you know, <laughs> okay, cars cars. There we go. Yeah. Is it a room where you, you literally you've you've had to step like between the the gaps in all the stuff piled up to get to your oh, chair? No, it's actually a very, it's just a very organised room. It's all around okay. It's just it's just what it is, really. Oh, but okay. now it's an absolute bomb site because there's boxes and cards and. Well, um, you've just opened uh, is, something very it? special um, live on air, uh, so so to speak. Um, yeah, this is an absolute yeah. pig's dying here as well at the moment, but I wish I could show you something decent off the top of my hand, but it's all just like stuff everywhere. Like, ah. Literally everywhere. Stuff. I, I'm not getting off the couch to show you anything, so you've no chance. Well, the thing is, Jake, if you get off the couch to show anyone anything, you'll probably shit your pants. So there's a good chance, yeah. Because you've had stomach poisoning. So yeah. There's we won't, a good chance we won't, at the minute. Yeah, we won't wish that upon anyone. Um this episode <laughs> will, will not be bleeped because quite frankly, I can't be asked. Um what's up at Dave Palumbo oh, at the top of the episode, guys? As the intro for the audio version. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, definitely. We've, we've, we've a lot of Dave Palumbo love over the last few episodes, and and, and rightly so. Um cool. All right, guys. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce. I'm gonna Jake. I'm gonna get 
let you go and get intravenously hooked up to some Strongbow. Could do with uh, that, yeah. Um, Carl, are you going to go and uh, uh, have a have a nice uh, wee dram now, just to soothe your spirits into the uh, into the week? Sunday evening? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think tidy this place up. I know. In fact, I think I'm going to get myself a coffee and I'm tear into that. Oh, nice! Your last box. Of yeah, water. that's cool. Oh, nice. dear me. All right. Well, enjoy that. Enjoy that. Um, thank you, guys. Um, we we British folks of are a small but passionate bunch, so it's nice to get together and do stuff like this. Um, yeah, and if you do something of that London card show next year, let's talk about jumping in together on it, maybe. Yeah, I think that'll be yeah, good. Cool. Yeah, yeah, defo. All right, guys, who fancies um, signing off this week's episode with the customary sign-off? Either one of you, either one of you joyful men want to... Listen? Enjoy collecting. The hobby Thank isn't you. in debt. The hobby isn't dead. We're still alive and kicking, and the global hobby. Yeah. enjoy collecting there we go there we go i love how you hit all the right notes there jake thank you very much i will i will send you some money in the post uh, okay.